I'm Professor David Atley. In this video, I'll be using the Rotating Sky Explorer from Knapp Labs to demonstrate some important concepts in basic astronomy. This will be really relevant for what you can see if you go outside and spend some time actually looking at the stars both over the course of a single night. Let's get started. I'll begin by locating the Rotating Sky Explorer in Knapp Labs. Knapp Labs is a free app that you can download for either PC or Mac. So I encourage you, if you're interested, to go ahead and pause this video, install Knapp Labs, and follow along as I work through this demonstration. I'll begin by going into the Rotating Sky section in Knapp Labs and bring up the Rotating Sky Explorer. Now that the Rotating Sky Explorer is open, let's begin by adding some stars to our sky. I'll start out by putting on a familiar star pattern, the Big Dipper. And then in addition to the Big Dipper, I'll also add just some random stars all over my celestial sphere so that we can get a sense for how stars will behave as time elapses. And then finally, the last thing in setup before I start is I'm going to take the crosshairs down here in the lower left that show the location of my observer and drag it to something that's a little bit more appropriate for where I am, which is in Denver, Colorado. So the sky that gets represented on the horizon diagram view on the right-hand side will be appropriate for someone looking at the sky from where I live. Okay. I'll switch on my star trails and start the animation. And as you can see, we have stars that are moving across the sky. They're going to, generally speaking, rise in the east, as that one right there just did, move across the sky until they reach a high point where they will then transit. This star just transited a moment ago in which it crossed this stripe that runs from the south to the north celestial poles and crosses directly overhead of my little stick friend here. So those stars are transiting, and then eventually they'll move over here and set in the west. And you can see that as days pass, they'll continue to follow those exact same paths. This is caused by the rotation in the Earth that you can see on the left-hand panel. If you look at the celestial sphere view over here, the Earth down in the middle is rotating underneath a group of fixed stars. So the stars have been basically glued onto this transparent celestial sphere, and then the Earth is moving underneath them, causing this apparent motion in the stars, in which they rise in the east and then set in the west. Let's pause for a minute. I'll reset my star trails and change my orientation to focus on something different. So I'll spin my horizon diagram around here to look at the northern part of the sky. So this little blue stick right there, that represents the north celestial pole. And then right underneath that, if I had a star to represent it, would be the north star, Polaris. Have a look at the Big Dipper as I let the animation progress and see how the Big Dipper looks. And you'll notice that the stars in the Big Dipper, except for the one at the very end of the handle, don't actually set at any point. They're going to stay in the sky. They are so close to the North Pole, right here at my little blue stick, that for me, where I am on the Earth, those stars never get a chance to go below the horizon, and we call those circumpolar, that is, near the pole. The Big Dipper is a circumpolar asterism. Technically, the Big Dipper is a smaller part of a larger constellation called Ursa Major, or the Great Bear. But if you want to think of the Big Dipper as a constellation in its own right, that's just fine. So you'll notice we have this circumpolar asterism along with a couple other randomly placed circumpolar stars that are neither rising nor setting. They're just staying up in the sky because they're close to the North Celestial Pole. 
if I rotate my view again, so I can focus on the south celestial pole, you'll see that there are also some stars that have the opposite situation. They're so close to the south celestial pole that rather than staying in the sky all the time, they never get above the horizon, and therefore we can't see them. It turns out that there are several very bright, famous constellations that are visible from the southern hemisphere, like, say, the Southern Cross, for example, that are completely invisible to observers in large parts of the northern hemisphere, including people like me who live in Denver. Let's talk about what happens if I change my latitude of my observer, however. So let me pause this animation and I will drag my crosshairs here that show where my observer is located from the approximate location of Denver and go south. So we'll end up in some unnamed island in the southern Pacific. And as I move my observer south, you'll notice that those stars, which previously had been invisible, start to pop up above the horizon, so I'll begin to be able to see them. And if I go far enough south, those stars, which previously were all invisible, now become circumpolar. So they're going to stay close to the south celestial pole. They'll always be above the horizon, and therefore those now become my circumpolar stars. And in the same way that the Big Dipper stayed above the horizon before, these stars will stay above the horizon now. Let me pause again and move my observer to one of the possible extremes in my latitude range. So let's go from the Southern Pacific Ocean all the way down to the South Pole. So maybe we're scientists working on some sort of experiment at the South Pole, so we have to live there for a while. What is the sky we see going to look like? As I let the stars begin to move, you'll notice that none of these stars now are rising or setting. They're all moving exactly parallel to the horizon because I'm standing at the south pole of the Earth and the Earth is basically rotating under my feet. So it's spinning me around in a circle. And what I see then is that the stars, which aren't changing positions, appear to move around my head opposite the direction of my rotation. So if you stand at the south pole, every star that you see will be circumpolar. And that will be true for the North Pole, too, for exactly the same reason. You're standing on the Earth's rotation axis, and the Earth is spinning under your feet. Something also different and kind of exciting happens if you stand on the Earth's equator. I'll leave that to you to figure out, so if you have a chance, go ahead and download this app, play around with it, and figure out how the stars will look if you're standing on Earth's equator. Thanks for watching.